like to call this meeting number 1634 to order at 6.02 p.m. with uh, eight of our members okay, present. Chris, we have a quorum. Before we start the meeting, I wanted to uh, give uh, member Bonnie Silvers an opportunity to make an announcement. Oh, this is one. Um, most of you know um, or knew Hilda Bank Shapiro, mm -hmm. who passed away um, last month, and she was integral to our music programs at 90 plus. She wow. came, played the piano all the time. She really did a great job mentoring, and it's my understanding that the memorial tomorrow is that it's a tomorrow at French Forum, right? Yeah. Park. Uh, Hilda five. also uh, had a, a solo show on Broadway. But sometimes I think it was when I was like five. Oh, <laughs> wow. yeah. So she's she, definitely she, that. She, was really she was fabulous, yeah. fabulous, and a definite loss. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to make an attempt to go, and if there's an opportunity. That said, I think we learned a shitload from her. A tonload from her. <laughs> Do we want to send the family a note? That would be lovely. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a Could wonderful we, idea. Okay. She played good. Satin Bell, and then she, okay. told, and she told us how she knew. Will do. Uh, All right. All right. So moving forward, um, that's really cool. we have no executive session tonight. That's very lovely. <laughs> Uh, we do have standing reports, and the first is the approval of this set of minutes. May I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. We have Jim and um, Jeff and. Some edits. So there, there are quite a few edits, and I think it's really important to get them straightened out. So please. Uh, so the first like thing to start. I had. Okay. Was um, make cook a yeah, that was mine too. Yeah, student spotlight and a KDC. And I don't know, is is her name Catherine? Yes, the young lady. So it just last name has to be changed twice, and, and that's on page two. And then there were reports, I mean, um, that were confusing to me. So I don't know if we could get clarity. Starting um, where, but fine. Starting with updated funding requests from the Regional School District Planning Board. Yep, okay. So first, it wasn't a rotation of subcommittee heads. We had one person, one head who left the community, mm -hmm. and another one who resigned as chair. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe we change that. So we change? Could, yes, because it wasn't. You know, we don't have a rotation in that group. Okay. Um, Where was that from? At the bottom oh, of okay. page yep. two. So change it to a chain. Yes. And then um, I, I don't know if somebody has a better way to uh, get clarity on. Um, I took a bunch of stuff out of it. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I took going to the expected, are you talking from the expected amount? Yeah, so I just expected amount of rural aid was, uh, was not received for rural aid based on the whatever the next uh, word was instead there will be likely seventy thousand dollars like last year period we don't need if there's one position right do we because there were other things that that money was going to go to take that and it was just a comparison of what that could represent do you want that in there no I, but it's what i said so yeah I'm right, saying <laughs> oh, right yeah no i understand um and then I took out, um, I took out has concerns having an empty amount of red and what will happen with the early college programs for the new building. I took that out. 
and that just went to state has dropped funding for regionalization uh, and was sent to school that should have enough growth funding to mitigate the issue. I took that out. Um, and I'm not sure that the project management subcommittee was told not to discuss this. It was not, uh, it wasn't told not so, to discuss yeah. it as far as I know, and I could be wrong, it wasn't called together. No. So basically, um, I took all that out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sheffield without the sea uh, will pay 15,000. Uh, Monterey Base will contribute on what was done by SBRSD and must be conveyed that the budget is slim. Um, basically, uh, take that out, just stick by the SB SBRSD. Am I taking too much out of it? Well, I think Maybe. that Monterey, whose budget is slim <clears throat> there? Is it our budget or Monterey's? So in that case, if unless we're if we're talking about our budget was pared Laura, down. Do you know what the answer is to that? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah, I do know that um, the select board in Monterey was concerned about what other people were willing to put up. That's true. I think we did make the point that we had already submitted a very slim budget to the towns and we had very little wiggle room, which I, I think that was what we were trying to convey there, which is significant. So I think uh, um, I think there should be a period after what is done by SBR SB and then a period that should be conveyed that the um, SBRSD budget is slim. That's what we. I agree with that statement. Okay. And then uh, the eighty-five percent of the one hundred fifty thousand is being put into educational visioning. Now these are facts that were relayed during the meeting. I don't. Since they are public facts, I'm not exactly sure they need to be here, but it, it seems like you should be showing that we discussed that and 50,000 from the BARR grant. Um, um, for facilitators to the high school design. Another correction there is no promotion or outreach is covered. And I think if we're going to keep that, it should go on to say in the $85,000. Okay. Because it is covered somewhere else. So that's misleading. Um, all right. There's a major. And then the other thing, okay. Yeah, the last, thing, go ahead. Yeah. the last thing that I was going to do is move the committee discussed through rural aid must be used for district related needs. I was going to put that up back at the end of the, there will be likely $70,000, $70,000 like last year. So that it's all that bit of information is all in one place before it goes into the next piece in terms of explaining what the plans are for the use of the rural aid. Taking that paragraph and putting it up. Moving it up, yeah, to right after what there will be likely 70,000, there will be likely, very English, yeah. likely be $70,000, 70, yeah, $70,000 like last year. Okay, I had under F of the Elizabeth Freeman dedication. Well, wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. before we go, okay. there's a lot of changes being made here. And I'm assuming that if people are not objecting, these are we can accept them as a as a group. Yep. Uh, before you go there, the the motion that we passed is not the motion that's written in here. It was resolved not to put in the actual motion was not to put any money into the regional planning board at the present time. It didn't say rural aid money and it did not say educational vision. So I think we should have the motion that we actually passed. I agree. I agree. Yes. Okay. So we need to change, take out for, from rural aid. 
and change education, uh, take out educational visioning. Okay. And then we have what we actually passed. Now, next, you have, you have something? Yeah, I had um, to in, under the Elizabeth Freeman dedication event. Yeah. Um, that's on page. That is on page five. five. Thank you. And um, where it says all students know who Elizabeth Freeman is. They know who she was, but I think the important thing there that I said is the leadership of our district made, has made sure for years that her story is included in our curriculum, which is pretty unique for a district. And I said it at that time. And then the one woman play, um, it's CTSB. And under school, on the subcommittee reports, um, I think we need to, to, it was that these committees did not meet, didn't need to meet. It's not that we passed over and didn't discuss the issues. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. misleading to say it was not discussed. Was, right, exactly. There was no need to meet. There was no meeting to report on. Right. So maybe change that, no meeting to Which report is, on. Yeah, which is how we've done it in the past. So oh. that say, would be continued from one line to right. the next. No, we, the always, was we always say that the committee hadn't met. Subcommittee. Subcommittee, sorry. Okay. All right. And I have a stupid one, but it's just a. Uh, uh, this is just going back to number 14, page four, waiver of PK tuition. Jane Burke disclosed that Walker says parents were students of her shouldn't that be former students. Can uh, you repeat that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Going okay. to waiver of PK tuition. This is number 14, new business. This was um, regarding um, the, tuition the tuition waiver. Jane Burke disclosed that Walker Stubbs' parents were students of hers. Had been. Yeah, right. I was going to say had been or were former. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being. Yeah. Professor Ruben. Yes, that would be. Yes, it's not in the present time. Okay. And on the 17, um, uh, future agenda items, I did not request a letter on splitting of the RSD PV, that the school committee craft a letter on issues related to the RSD. Right. I missed one. PV, but I never said splitting. No. Yep. Okay. It's also included in this, these minutes that the um, the committee wanted to um, address um, an action plan regarding the um, RSPPD during this meeting. So. Okay, so I uh, are we ready to vote on the amended version of these minutes? Mm -hmm. As amended. As so amended. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The minutes as amended. Do we have to pick a, a decision? Have to take that. Accept that. I move that we do you accept the amendments oh. to your motion. Yes. And I concur. Okay. Uh, Art. Yes. Jeff? Yes. Jim? Yes. Danil? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. And Jane? Yes. Has Kara appeared yet? I don't see her. Okay, I know that Dennis is detained because of a family illness. He let me know last week that he couldn't be there. So. All right. Now we are going to enrollment. So enrollment is on uh, 3B in your packets um, as of, um, I just want to check, um, the August 1st date, uh, it was 617, and I know I did not bring my little cheat sheet, not one at me, because I don't know where it is, um, <laughs> but uh, if you're looking, there's there's a, probably a 15 or or 
so student decrease at that time. And um, it's mostly due to students who completely moved out of state. Not all, but the significant number was that. So she broke it all down for me and I have no idea what the sticky note is, so I apologize, but I can get that for you um, at another time. Uh, explain uh, the new enrollment page. I, I know, but I'm not sure. I oh. um, so I think what she's saying is we don't really do one. She's saying that the total number is included in the September enrollment. What I, I'm wondering, mind you, um, We've had one at, uh, in an inconsistent basis for the last couple of weeks. I'm wondering if it should have been the September one, because she told me she doesn't usually do a summer. So I think it might be in the wrong column. And she's saying all of these changes are kind of the total of the all, all of the summer. And this is really the September one enrollment, even though it's in the August one column. That's my gut. Okay, so I would say we should have her clarify it. Get it clarified in the next meeting. We will know where we are. And but I'm pretty sure that's enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, um, did we have exit interviews with the kids who I see? We had people who moved over to um, Meadowbrook or the boys or Monument. It's only if they volunteer to oh, okay. have a discussion. Yeah. Um, and I thought you were going to say staff uh, or anybody who changed, <laughs> which we did do those. Um, but uh, you know, if people did say, um, you know, what where they were going or, or why. Um, so in some cases, but I don't know that students had. You know, it could be for family reasons. It could be because their parents work somewhere else. Right. I mean, there's a lot of that. So proximity to where people work. Um, but the significant number was completely out of state. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Beth on enrollment? And miscellaneous correspondence. We had some requests from the regional planning board to send out some information. This is um, so. I don't think that's considered miscellaneous, possibly. And we also have the letter uh, concerning the uh, ask for money from September 16th. Just yeah, well, this is, well, that's the, that's the new letter, yeah. which is saying that um, put it on hold because they're going to be looking at other Right, 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 right. So I was just, I mean, it, these are could have been dealt with in the business with the uh, a town, you know, the merch, the whatever it's called. You can't go in either spot. Yeah, but I think it, it's um, listed as an AA issue, but it is correspondence that we received. So oh, it probably is supposed to be under there. We just went right to it. Okay. But I saw it as far as it can be both. We can talk about it. Twice. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to uh, item four student representative report. And I'm not, I'm not sure if the election has happened yet. Jesse? I'm not sure if we have anybody on the screen. I don't think so. Oh. Getting all my eyes back. <laughs> yeah. No. So um, we were attempting to get a student here. Um, a little challenging today. We had uh, home soccer, home volleyball. One of the soccer teams is away. Um, <laughs> what they were going to come and say is that they're doing their elections um, early next week in both middle school and high school. And we should have representatives set up um, and moving forward have somebody here at each meeting. Um, their elections are going to happen uh, by grade. Um, and middle school will do theirs. And then high school will do it all the same day in four separate locations. Um, got a lot of kids interested in, in running for positions, so we're excited oh, about what the elections will look like. And do you know the outcome of the soccer games? Uh, girls soccer won 4 nothing. 
um, volleyball is still going on, and I haven't gotten a report on board soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the latest update. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, <laughs> do we have a student spotlight? We do have a student spotlight, and um, Mr. Miller uh, gave it to Mr. Thompson to show. So um, this is going to be a video that they made of um, one of the action items that we talked about in our um, strategy for continuous improvement plan, which is the responsive classroom oh, um, that is happening at uh, all the elementary grades. So you're gonna see uh, kind of a montage of, of those experiences for students. What do you say? What do you say? Today is going to be a fantastic day. Today is going to be a fantastic day. Boogie and down. Get a little bump. Julie, did you want to say anything about the responsive classroom? I did. I wanted to give you the option. I probably took your thunder. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. I was just thinking, what a great video, and I want to send it to our coach that is helping support us in our responsive classroom work. Uh, she will be so pleased to see all the great work that the teachers have done. Um, we got a lot of positive feedback on the training that they had for morning meeting at the beginning of the year. And Sharon Rawls, who is the person who's coaching us in responsive classroom is gonna be back on October 26th. So it's uh, an excellent program. So I have a question for you. It's great for the kids to learn how to take turns and listen. Mm -hmm. What you're, you're, I'm sorry, Bonnie, what? I think you just answered it. So the objective 
of these exercises was that students would learn about taking turns and following. It is. Yeah. It's, it's to make sure that all children have a voice in the classroom and feel seen. And along with that, they absolutely learn how to be good listeners and they learn how to ask real questions. So when they do the share component, which you didn't see an example of in that video, it's not show and tell. They share an experience. So they get practice at talking publicly. And then the children have to either ask a question or make a comment. And that's really amazing to see them learn how to ask questions. Because of course, in the beginning, all they want to do is make comments. So they learn how to think about what someone has shared and ask a real question from them. Thank you, Julie. Uh, you are breaking up. So um, we're Sorry. working for that we get the, we, we've gotten it, but if you see a, a me waving my hand, maybe you'll turn off your video so we can hear your voice better. Jane, I have just another quick follow. One more question from Bonnie. Which is, um, Danelle and Jeff, did your kids go through this? They're in the same class. I, I definitely, I've spoke with the third grade teacher at Parent Night, and they're, they're definitely doing it. Uh, and it seems like it's a really great, like, program. Sorry. But, but from cool. what I'm seeing is giving kids the confidence to state something, share something. It's like a public speaking thing, but then the oh, response yeah. of listening and the engagement, I think it, the way Mr. Masters was putting it, it's like almost kind of making up for lost time in the pandemic where people lost that social emotional, the ability mm -hmm. to look somebody in the eye and mm -hmm. um, respond. It's been very nice. And you know, my little one, six, he's in first grade and he's very, very shy. He says nothing. But the first thing he did tell me after the first day was that the one thing he was most excited to say was that in class, the first thing they do is they get all in a circle and they have a ball and they roll it to, they pick someone to roll it to and say, good morning, so-and-so, whoever they roll it to. And he just thought that that was awesome. So mm -hmm. it was like, I feel like it's bringing some of these kids out of their shell. Mm -hmm. It builds community. Mm -hmm. um, I get them to know each other. We were just talking about an admin today about are we seeing less referrals down to the office because mm -hmm. people are talking to each other and getting to know each other. And fingers crossed was the answer. Yes, it's very early, <laughs> but um, you know. So, but it's it's being done with fidelity, and that is really important. Thank you. That's great. All right. I think we are on to public comment. We have a few people uh, watching and um, looking for any hands if somebody wants to make a statement. I see George McGurn. Do you recognize? Um, <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I just wanted to briefly say that uh, uh, I'm sure that. Um, all members of the school committee um, saw Heather Bellow's article in um, the Eagle this week and the subsequent letters. Uh, I think, uh, quite frankly, the article uh, um, about the Bar Foundation driven uh, initiative um, was a kind of cringeworthy story. Uh, and it really uh, illustrated uh, that. Uh, the Berkshire Hills district is going in a somewhat uh, opposite direction from Southern Berkshire, uh, particularly with the Mount Everett Early College with uh, Bard College. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, single model that is being discussed. And um, Daniel Jordan Kelly is president at your meeting this evening. Um, I see Tom Burkle is also uh, here. Uh, and the three of us are the Agermont representatives on the uh, regional planning board. And uh, we have suggested an alternative model. And if members of the school committee 
uh, have not seen that. Um, I would certainly hope that um, we could make it available to you. Thank you. Thank you, George, for your, um, taking the time to come to the meeting and make a comment for us. Uh, any other hands up? All right, then we go to the business manager's report. And there is that one for this evening. All right, so we skip that. And now we are um, going to the business with district member towns. Uh, we update and assess our situation at every meeting. And um, I just wanna review that in July and August, we had discussions about our reactions to how the planning board was proceeding. And um, we also discussed last meeting, the, the request for funding, which now we have updated that uh, we can hold off on that discussion until further notice when it um, is fully funded by another source. And reminding you in the minutes at, and in future agenda items section, we had um, gotten a request from the full committee to have a discussion of the status of the planning board's work and how it's affecting our district. And you have a copy of a draft letter. Uh, the planning board is meeting, the full board is meeting next week. And this um, draft is put together for your use and figuring out what, how you want to proceed. And um, Laura can read it, or you can read it to you. Like maybe Laura can read it because people in on, on Zoom don't have a copy. Is that agreeable to you, Laura? Yeah, that's fine. As long as you guys can hear me okay, we're good. <laughs> yes, you're coming through very strongly tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so members of the Regional School District Planning Board, RSDPB, we, the members of the Southern Berkshire Regional School District Committee, feel strongly that the time has come, particularly in light of recent occurrences, that we closely examine the current environment in which we are trying to create this once in a generation change to how, what, and where we deliver education to the students of our eight towns. We are writing this letter as a way to get uh, the full committee's attention as we are at a loss and not sure how to best make our concerns heard. We firmly believe that our school committee members on the RSDPV, despite uh, what some may think and have said, have approached this major initiative in the spirit of collaboration and moving toward a model that makes sense for all of our students. Again, despite some contrary views that have been expressed, we, uh, sorry, <laughs> my sprint small. We said we entered this process though with some trepidation, with a great deal of excitement um, in thinking about how we could all potentially gain um, by working together to bring our community resources together to explore new approaches to the delivery of education. Unfortunately, it is our firm belief at this time that this process is being rushed and that until we address the difficult dynamic between the two districts and the ongoing feeling of imbalance, there simply is no path forward. To further explain, despite the fact that we have clearly demonstrated our commitment to the work of RSDPB, through our active presence at over 120 meetings across two and a half years, clearly demonstrating our desire to see a successful outcome to our work. There have been outspoken rebukes of the SBRSD school committee, uh, district leadership team and our staff. We believe that this is in no way a warranted response to many of our questions related to the assumptions regarding the financial savings realized by a merger have not been answered and the premises upon which savings have been explained, i.e. larger class size, redundancies eliminated, staff retirements, et cetera, do not in many cases make sense to us. Responses have not been forthcoming regarding our district's main campus in Sheffield. We do not believe that the transportation studies are responding to several concerns. These issues have been raised multiple times and uh, not yet fully discussed. 
as some uh, as school committee members, parents, and active community participants, we are feeling at capacity um, with the work within our district. Additionally, we believe that when it comes to further explaining our sense that our two districts have different philosophies, we look at how we implement change in SBRSD. Our district leadership team, a large segment of our staff and members of our school committee are jointly engaged in implementing programs that have been under development for several years in order to ensure the greatest degree of buy-in from all impacted by educational decisions. These include our new math program, already 38% um, improvement in scores on standardized tests, a complete review of revamping K through 12 reading material, the expansion of our early childhood programs throughout the district, uh, the exciting early college high school, at Mount Everett, uh, recipients of 1 million plus in grant funds and our redesigned middle school program. All of our districts work to bring in added support through grant writing efforts have, um, have more than quadrupled the outside funds that we are receiving to support new initiatives. Added to all of this is the enormous effort to put forward uh, put forward by staff and district leadership to develop new programs to enrich our arsenal of social and emotional support tools to assist in students coping with the impact of COVID-19. Unfortunately to us, the negative dynamic at full RSDPB meetings and many subcommittee meetings is becoming an emotional energy drain. Our members show up, engage, make suggestions, do research to, to support the RSDPB's efforts, volunteer for additional work, put forth our best efforts to try and bring positive energy in order to collaborate, the environment in which we are working is not truly conducive to our feeling productive. If anything, we are left in constant state in a constant state of defensiveness and charged with not cooperating because we are not 100% behind pouring all of our ener energy into being absorbed. And yes, that is the prevailing sense and working to create a, a new monument mountain. Again, this is unfortunate. However, at this point, we are struggling as we consider withdrawing from this process unless we can take a pause, stop being driven in our view by the MSBA's deadlines, work to resolve the strong sense of imbalance between our two districts and create a timeline that truly allows us to examine variations on the proposed model as was promised when the research team uh, put forward their extensive report in March. After all of this time, money spent, energy invested, it's become too difficult to continue in this environment and feel productive. We strongly believe that we can all figure this out if we take a step back for a moment. We may be blue and we may bleed blue and gold, but um, first we believe in providing our five communities the best education possible for their children while acknowledging fiscal restraints. We hope you receive this missive in the spirit in which it has been written. We want to be able to support a joint effort to bring public school education in South County to new heights. We need to explore how best to accomplish this shared goal. Sincerely, us. All right, so at this point, um, I'll entertain comments uh, about any comments people want to make. And would you entertain a motion? I would entertain a motion. I, I move that we approve this for release. I'll gladly second that. Okay, so we have Jeff moving to approve the letter and um, Art to second. Now let's have a, a, a discussion. I'm very curious to see what people want, want to say about it. Um, first to the to Bonnie and I believe Danelle and, so, and, Laura. Laura. and Laura. Thank you. And Jane. And Jane. And Beth. <laughs> Thank you very much for putting in the time to do this. I think you put this in a very compassionate voice, um, which I think in the, the sensitivity of being able to articulate their perspective and articulating ours, it is my hope that we are heard. If it is not heard, um, it is a shame. Anybody else want to make a comment? Um, I just want to, I mean, this is this means being recorded. It's going to get viewed. <laughs> There's going to be this letter, all this stuff. I just want to be so clear about 
um, just reiterate like my placement in this process and the genuine interest and curiosity I've gone into this process of trying to figure out if, if this merge is feasible and staying really open-minded about the possibilities there. Um, and, and at the same time, really resonating with how difficult it's been. And it seems to be getting more difficult <laughs> over time, which is just a shame. So. Uh, Danelle? Um, yeah, along the same lines, it, this wasn't um, taken lightly. We had you know, multiple discussions about it and we kind of delved into what we can do to make this work several times, um, multiple times. And this is uh, where we came up. So thank you, Bonnie, for writing this amazing letter. I think it says it all. And um, it, we spent a lot of time in trying to decide what was the best path forward. I think the, an important thing, just a minute, Bonnie, is that um, we need to hear from everybody on the committee who, who isn't on the planning board, because you've heard from us quite a bit before. So if you can make yourself say something, um, I would appreciate, I mean, I can't make everybody speak, but I think it's really important that we hear from everybody, if you're able. So Nancy's shaking her head. And you, do you have your thoughts together at this point? I have, yeah, because I've been thinking about it a lot since, um, well, what, since the conversation started, but certainly since joining the school committee in April. And I think um, several things stand out. And I'm going to keep starting back where, as far as I'm concerned, as a school committee member, my job is to ensure that the school keeps working as long as it's a functioning entity. Mm -hmm. And I have yet to hear in any of the public meetings that I've been at, I have yet to hear the acknowledgement that that's an important job. I also have yet to hear in the public meetings any kind of understanding that it's not specifically about what is it going to take to sell the idea. That's a direct quote from Lucy um, in the last public meeting that I was at. What do you think it's going to, I know it was nice, I was a planning, yeah, planning well, some of these, uh, public outreach maybe. Anyway, I was really shocked because it was one of those of saying, you're really not hearing that these are two working districts and they're really not hearing that one of the districts is not being heard. So that's one piece that I think is not a good indicator of a, um, of a shared mission. Um, and also is not a good way to support our students at the moment when the concerns are so high. The other thing that I wanna say is that to me, I do realize that we have very opinionated people going to these meetings. They're vocal with their opinions. They're well, they're well articulated, they're well presented. And rather than listening to the presentations, hackles are going up and going, la, 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 la. And that's not appropriate. Um, it's not, it's simply not appropriate. And I think that lastly, the speed factor is out of line. You never create a contract. That's such a major business contract. You do not do that in what, March to, March was when it was first presented. Is that right to the mm -hmm. public? March to mm -hmm. freaking May, you do not. You do not, nobody, anybody would create a business model in that amount, or present a business model. So I think it's really important to step back. I, don't, I, I think the conversations should continue how to improve education in South County. I don't argue that. But I think to, um, to I don't know, I think it's been completely, completely um, inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. The regional board. The letter from Lucy Knight, probably minor considering all of this, but in the letter. Can you use a louder voice so we can? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't. I have a hearing. Okay. Um, so I should be hearing better. Um, part of it is you hear your own voice better. Okay, when yeah, you're yeah. hearing it. Um, 
it says in the second paragraph for those towns that have a special meeting, have scheduled a special meeting for authorization. The town meeting in Egremont has been described to me as the purest form of democracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we're having a meeting. We're having a special town meeting for budgetary purposes. Is, it, is Lucy, this in our packet? Yes. So oh, the, uh, Lucy can wait in line just like our just like our fire department and our library. I I don't know if she meant that to be. You guys don't know how to run a budget, but that's how it's at. Um, and I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a lot of money we're talking about. We have a lot of, this is an issue that all our, I think it's right, where everyone is right that we should put this to all our, all our citizens. So I'm confused by what you said. Are you reacting to Lucy's I'm letter? I'm really reacting to Lucy's letter, yeah. Yeah, okay. So what I'm wondering about, I appreciate your comment. Do you want to comment on whether the school committee should be sending a letter of oh, the this letter. I'm sorry, I'm, yeah, I got off track. That's okay. That's okay. I'm giving I think a letter is seems to me like the genuine feelings of the people that um, in this room that I and on the Zoom that I've talked to. Yeah. yeah it's okay. a genuine feeling. I think yeah. it's valid. Okay. And what I know of the process. Mm -hmm. um, Art? Yeah, I'm in total agreement of sending this letter. I was on the in the eighties. We talked about <laughs> yep. this merger, and it went absolutely nowhere. Nobody could ever agree on anything. There was always animosity between the two school districts, and here we are again in the same situation. And it's not good for either district. It's not improving education, and Fighting about this only makes it harder in both districts to move forward. Mm -hmm. Bye. I just want to also uh, second what Laura said. I volunteered to be considered for this committee in Sheffield on the very last day. And I've said this before because I really hoped that we were going to make major inroads in terms of bringing exciting things in terms of education. And if you remember the meetings we had when it was a small group of when Peter Taylor's office, we really felt, you know, we could do innovative educational programs. And I was really hopeful for a long period of time. I really was hopeful, but the tenor has so changed. I will not bring up the community outreach meeting. Some of you have seen the video. Um, the tenor has so changed. And I believe that it it's just too frustrating because we won't accomplish anything. It's everything that Nancy has said. And I mean, this is really like a, a sort of like a last ditch effort to get somebody to look at us because we're not being paid attention to, mm -hmm. and it's harmful to the economies of our eight towns. If people are considering moving here and they see this conflict, we have to think how important education is and making decisions when you buy a home. We have to think about the impact this is having on our faculty and administration. It's like you're trying to run a district and at the same time, you're responding to constant attacks. So I hope, you know, we can send this letter. All right. Um, I think we should vote on the motion. Are you ready to vote on the motion? Mm -hmm. All right. So the motion is to- Laura's hand was up to say something. Thanks, Julie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go like this. Every time I use the digital hand, I can't get it back down. So I don't do it anymore. Um, I just also just wanted to say like in this little part of our agenda that um, I still, you know, idealist head on. I talk about this a lot. I'm an idealist. I still think that independently of this merger process, 
we can look at ways to collaborate with Berkshire Hills and we can look at ways that, to share resources and it doesn't have to have anything to do with this process. And that is an option that's always available to us. And that's, you know, we can do that anytime we want, you know? So I just want to put that out there. Yes. Laura, that's great that, that you brought that. that up again because that has been raised numerous times before this model was uh, adopted, but er by everyone than the six naysayers were in this room, four of them anyway. And um, so I think this should not be taken as a lack of interest in working together. That is not what it's about. We're very passionate about doing the best we can for kids. And there, we think there probably are wonderful things we can do together, but the, the, it seems there's a consensus here that the, the place it is now is not getting us in that direction and something needs to be done about it. And we, we hope that there will be a discussion about that and that's where we'll, where it goes. And one last short comment. Yeah, Laura, I actually did have a paragraph in the letter addressing exactly that. And I really, because, because we, we do it. Jesse is always doing things with Monument. We've done it with Trips, we've done it, but it was pointed out to me that it was sort of getting off the main topic. The main topic is really a plea for recognition and how we move ahead. So I removed that paragraph, but I didn't ignore it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, so um, the vote can commence. All right. Can you read the motion? Um, pardon me? Can you say what the motion was? Uh, the motion was to send the letter as written to the regional. I think I said to release the letter. The release. release. Okay. Let me. Motion is to release the letter. Please continue. That's it. To who? As presented. Sure. As presented to the regional school district planning board. Would you accept um, um, an amendment? And well, I guess I'm kind of amending it already. So, <laughs> to the, and to the public, and to the public, I'm okay with that. Art, are you okay with that? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Art's okay. Okay. All right. So the the motion is now to release the letter as presented to the regional school <laughs> district planning Bless board you. and to the public. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Art? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Jim? Yes. Danielle? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jane? Yes. And I, I, I just want to thank you all for the way you comported yourself through all the discussions we've had around this and how open-minded you have been. And I appreciate that um, who you are. And Laura, thank you for taking the lead on presenting it tonight. Yeah, and thank you for finishing up, making the letter whole. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Well. All right, so um, my chairman's report is very short. I just want to call your attention to the fact that a number of us will not be here at the reorganization meeting in November. And that gives us two meetings plus, if we call extra ones, to attend to some of the things that we wanted to get done and to stay on task. Because those of us who are leaving are not leaving because we don't care about what happens here. We're leaving for personal reasons. So I want it made clear, well, I'm hoping that we are committed to working even double duty the next month uh, to attend to things that need to, to get done. And those are, some of them are listed in the, um, in the new business. So I'll get to them later, but I just wanted to, to say that now. And I will pass on to the superintendent report. Sure. So I, I didn't think I was going to fire off quite a report like this. So I'll try to make it short and sweet because there's a lot in here. Um, so
so with grants, I thought it was, I, I was really so incredibly devastated today when we got the news that the HVAC grant was released from the state, which we had been waiting for and waiting for and realized that we don't qualify. So you needed to have um, an economically disadvantaged number of 46.1% or more and we're at 42%. So we cannot apply. Can I just ask you a question about that? Is that because new people have come in into the district with higher incomes or? I mean, basically the, the overall assumption is you're too wealthy at this yeah. point, you know? So that doesn't necessarily, in caps, you know. Okay, all right. Is um, it politically, is it possible politically to speak to our representatives since we are so close? I think you could do any of those things. Um, you know, but I, I looked at the list. They actually gave a list. Of, if, if you go on the website, it'll show you who did qualify. Um, and they listed it out and for the amount that they could qualify for. So, um, and what site do you go to? It, it's a Dusty, it's right on the, on the, Dusty. On the Dusty site. And uh, yeah, it's right up there with, uh, here's, here's the um, much weighted for uh, $100 million in HVAC. Uh, mm -hmm. And Sorry. so, yeah, it's, it's really, it was devastating, I, I thought. Um, we also uh, received notice that the um, early college support grant application was released at the beginning of this week and it's due tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to get on that. Um, so uh, there's a baseline of fifty thousand um, dollars with a potential of up to another twenty five thousand dollars in additional funding. So um, we will work diligently to put that together. Um, and so when we talk about um, working together as districts, number three, we are we were asked by Berkshire Hills to partner in this joint effort, which is called the Virtual Learning Excursion, featuring Vista Unified School District and Mission Vista High School. It's all online. Um, they had, um, it's, it's a way to look at other models and determine, um, you know, or maybe get some ideas about how best to um, promote our, our educational needs. Um, here in, in the Berkshires. So um, that starts actually next week on the 28th uh, with a kickoff meeting. So there's two teams and I listed the members of the teams uh, of our team here um, and we matched the, the team that was submitted by Berkshire Hills. So I just wanna say over and over again, this happens all the time. It's not new. How do you put this in? I don't know. I Can I ask a quick question about this? Where are Vista and Mission Vista? I believe they're out west. Okay. And they're oh, doing no. something, they already have a relationship and we're looking at them as a possible model for right. our two districts for collaborations. Well, just as a possible model for a whole lot of different reasons. It doesn't necessarily mean um, anything. We could be looking at it. Um, this is what was written. I put in here specifically what was written in the grant. Um, but I think we can all look at it through the lens that we feel we need to look at it. So. And thank you for putting our best people in the group. <laughs> well, we're very well represented here. We Who, are. Do you want to share with us? It's on you. It's here. Oh. It's, I, I list them all. I list everything. Oh. Um, so uh, another update um, on our solar initiative. Our representative sent us uh, a note. Um, about our letter of intent and our work with National Grid. And um, they noticed that National Grid has initiated the group study uh, to review all of the local applications and on the utility circuit, I guess there's a few people who plan for an application. So he stated that um, our approval process, because we don't know how long the study is gonna take, it could be six months or a year, um, the, but the um, project is public and we, have the incentive so nothing um we're, we're preliminary qualified with um what they said at the at the proposed rate they were talking about so it just might be a little bit more delayed so i wanted to bring that um as you know we have um mr wells has um moved on he's going to be moving on as of next week so we had two positions open the director of buildings and grounds and um, the director of food service. 
um, which is now what I'm going to be next week. Um, <laughs> but uh, and really everyone else here, so get an apron. Um, but anyway, uh, we did hire, um, I'm excited to report, we did hire a new director of buildings and grounds, Mr. John Borwick. Um, he has a tremendous amount of experience in safety, security, purchasing, management, and operations. Um, the hiring committee was unanimous in the recommendation. And um, I'm hoping that you get to meet him in future meetings. He's already started and has maximized his time working with uh, Mr. Wells before he goes. Oh, great. Great. Okay, so this is, you can see into the professional opportunities why we might not have time for anything else. Um, I was scheduled, if I am not in the kitchen, to go to the New England Association of School <laughs> Superintendents <laughs> Conference next week um, in Northampton, um, which has um, all the Northeastern states, and it's all about the future. What does district leadership look like teaching student skills, which I think ties in nicely with a lot of the goals that we have on our, as part of our action plan. Um, uh, the Berkshire County Superintendent's Roundtable uh, sent me as one of the representatives um, on the Professional Development Committee for all superintendents in Massachusetts. So I will be on that call tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Um, so we'll be planning um, all the learning opportunities for superintendents across the state. Um, the Mars Board of Directors meeting also is looking to create a more specific roundtable just for people who run regional school districts and to provide mm -hmm. a place for us to address our problems of practice that are very specific to regional school districts. So um, that is an exciting, um, so that will be at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, <laughs> And then I volunteer to <laughs> join um, the Mass Ready Foundation, um, our district learning series that the association is putting out, which is um, the goal to help all of us with um, how we move the uh, work of building and sustaining cultures of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging forward in our district. So there's three all day sessions and um, a capstone session in April. So um, that starts in October, October 4th. Um, but one of the things that I really am interested here in tonight is if the committee would consider, because um, like I need nothing else to do, but I really am interested in looking to join the national level, which is called this, um, it's the AASA, which is the School Superintendents Association. Um, the cost to join for a district of our size, I put all the links in there so you could go do the research. There's a ton of information on the advocacy, um, uh, all sorts of tools that are available to districts is for a district our size, it's $470, which I think is completely reasonable, but it does require a vote from the committee to allow me to join that. The reason I... Um, I, I have been to several things that they've offered before, uh, and I, I have, um, you know, used them for research uh, prior to this, but they have just started um, a new initiative, which is specific to rural schools. So um, it's called the Rural Education Steering Committee. Uh, and I also put the link to that very specific committee. And it's talking all about um, ways that, nationally we could sustain smaller regional or rural school districts in an effective way and still giving students outstanding experiences and i just feel like it's speaking to us and i really would like to um, be a part of it it is grossly expensive even if you join it's it would still cost me two thousand dollars i reached out and i said we're a tiny district is there any way you could think about um, scaling this back at all and um, they that was not a particular option um, but I did put it in here so that you could see um, how many meetings there are and what the resources for that would be like I just think it's so timely and critical to the work that we're currently doing um, I will say one of the things that piqued my interest is we're always hearing that is it sustainable to be a you know 650 mm -hmm. student district and they actually have a membership level for if you're a district of 300 or less so there's quite a few all across the nation. Um, 
I am going to reach out to the committees that I serve on and see if maybe they would sponsor part of this for me, if I would be willing to share what I get um, with the organizations, I don't know. Um, all I know is the first meeting is October 19th. So, um, you know, I just wanna put this out there for the consideration of the school committee. If you feel like um, it would be something that you'd be interested in and in participating. Okay. Um, so this second one, it's a membership for the committee or is it for you? No, it, I would be a member of the rural, the, the national rural um, steering committee. Okay. Um, I mean, yes, in the sense that you can have the, any resources that I, yeah. you know. I, just cursory, I, I, do you need a vote tonight or is this something that we can uh, Only on the, um, on the, the first, the first membership, because that is something that um, you actually list them out in my contract of what yeah. things I can join on behalf. I, I move that we approve uh, the membership to be AASA, AASA for the for $470. Second. Um, speaking to this, um, this is not just, this is an investment for oh, yeah. our community, right? Um, it's not, regardless of what happens in the future, that's experience and expertise and what you can bring. And data from other like districts um, across the country could be really beneficial to this tumultuous yeah. time. Um, and I think it's great that you brought this to our attention. Uh, I'm going to go Danelle and then you, Bonnie. So just a quick question. So the, the AASA, which we have approved, well, we're going to move to approve, formed this Rural Education Steering Committee is totally separate? It's part, it's, it's one of the activities of this group. So okay. now that I'm a member, it's really 2,500 to be part of the steering committee. But if you if you vote to approve the that it would be two thousand dollars. I did try to get that down, but that didn't work out. I tried chopping it down. But. Yeah, Bonnie. Um, I think it's really important that we do this, and it's it responds to Nancy, like what you were saying, the whole issue of sustainability. I mean, I just looked up this Vista Unified. It's a school district with twenty thousand students. <laughs> A thousand staff members. Slightly I mean, different. Yeah, slightly different. I mean, uh, superintendent assistants. I mean, we, I think we have to pick and choose what we get involved in. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was. It's very timely that I just got introduced to somebody who's nationally involved in the superintendent association and has a podcast, and he had interviewed the the. Now, international head of this organization who is brilliant. And what, what I learned in 45 minutes of listening to him talk, uh, I can only imagine what we could do if we were involved in, in a group. Nancy? The other thing I think is uh, kind of backing up probably uh, what Jeff, um, Bonnie, and Janet noted. Um, I think it will enhance the district's strength within itself. I think it will be a good addition, superb addition to all the different education initiatives that have been taken, that have been put forth following COVID. And I think also with the um, expansion or the creation and now the pending expansion of the early uh, early college, which helped it. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, all right. Friends. I think that, uh, <laughs> I think that, that, that it will, emphasize the um, emphasize the desire for this district to maintain itself and continue. I'm wondering what and I'll be a great you'll it also make you a great voice for all the other districts yeah. in the county including yeah, yeah I think I hope so yeah I hope so is there a reason why we wouldn't approve add the 2000 into this I think we need to wait and see what that thing is mm -hmm. I mean, you could say that if I can't get it to do something else, um, because I don't, when's our next meeting? On the 12th. Okay. So let me do some magic in between. Um, I'll join and then let me see if I can talk to my organizations and see if I can get um, any, um, any buy-in from the other organizations or yeah. the value of the information you would be bringing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Quick question also um, with the, the, 
being a part of the um, AASA. Are there is there budget needed for travel for conferences or anything, or is it all virtual? Oh, um, a lot of it's virtual. I haven't okay. even looked at any. Um, a lot of the things that I've already used have all been virtual okay. resources. So. Yeah. Um, so it's reasonable. But I would to tell you if yeah. I, you know, thought it was important to go to some. They haven't said as part of the steering committee you're going to have to travel. I haven't heard that yet. So, so that you can find out. Yeah, it's, I, and actually, I put the link here so you can read it as well. I did not see that as part of it because it's very detailed about what the steering committee is. I encourage you to see if um, yeah. you know you think it's as valuable as I think. That makes sense. Um, can we take can really we quickly? I am willing to amend my proposal. Maybe we approve up to a thousand dollars so that Beth can go to the other organizations, saying we I've already got a thousand committed. I need to raise the other thousand for the membership. Um, and at least it's mitigating it. And uh, is there appetite for that? I'd second that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I amend my motion to approve <laughs> um, Beth's ability to join AASA at the base membership for four hundred and seventy dollars per year, and authorize up to one thousand towards the expense to join the steering committee. We just, what is it called? Rural, it's called the Rural Steering Committee. Rural. Education Steering Committee. Rural Education Steering Committee with the intention that she gets the other thousand dollars from other partnering organizations. So who seconded Second my original one? Awesome. Did you, you were the one who seconded my, you're the one who has to accept it. I said, oh, okay, oh, yeah. second, okay, all right. All right, got it. Does anybody need it repeated or you got it? Okay, so now we're ready to vote on the uh, motion as amended and approved. The amendment as approved. Art? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jim? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Laura? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. And Jane? Yes. Now, I just have to say that this morning I was told, well, there wouldn't be any superintendent's report. I know, it was close. <laughs> it was close. Jane was all set for it not to happen, Jeff. I, I mean, come I mean, on. This is really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started to think about it. Ever did, oh, so thanks. I thanks. Okay, well, so. I was trying to compile my thoughts and I thought, what the heck? <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, the director of curriculum instruction and professional development, um, Julie is almost always here. It has to be virtual tonight, and I'm not. I'd like to give you an opportunity, Julie, uh, to say what you'd like to say. If anything, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, since I took your suggestion and turned it, would hear me better. No, we can't no, hear you very well at all. Chat and read it. Let me try one thing. Hold on. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's these rural, our rural homes. <laughs> so, okay, so can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. So even though I don't live in your rural community, I live in a rural community as well. So, and I sat down to write my report and like Beth, I found that it was getting really, really long. So I decided that to make it less cumbersome and less confusing, I hope to you guys, I'm just gonna tackle one thing each meeting. So we have been really lucky this year, and I've mentioned a few of the things that we have been accepted into through DASI, but I thought I really should give you a better snapshot of each one individually. <laughs> Excuse me. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about this opportunity that we were given with the state. It's called a Learning Acceleration Network. <laughs> Excuse me, running up those stairs. I'm like spent. 
So um, we, it's um, put on by the state along with TNTP, which is the um, new teachers project, which has been around since 1997. And TNTP is also the same group the state worked with to come up with multi-tiered systems of support. It's the same group that helped with the accelerated roadmap we used. And so now they are working with us and they are giving us free coaching, which is amazing. So with their support, we um, have been given virtual coaching twice a month and we are given in-person coaching um, four times during the course of the year. And then we also have the opportunity once a month to meet with other districts in cohort meetings so that we can share experiences. So they have worked with Sandy Beth and I in coming up with a goal for our district for this year. And we have for the first time next week, um, the coach is coming in on Tuesday and she's gonna be working with our middle school staff we had to focus in, so we decided to focus in on middle school as we are trying to build their capacity to be able to access the early college programs. And um, we're really excited to be working with them. I mean, it's a huge resource that we're getting for free. And the whole goal here is to help support the acceleration of student learning. So um, I hope that that lets you understand it a little bit more. So when I bring it up as the year goes on, you'll have something to kind of attach it to. And the, our next school committee meeting, I'm gonna talk to you a lot more about the inclusive academy that we have been accepted into, which is a three-year program. But I was afraid if I talked about both in one night, it, they would get muddled together. Yeah. Okay, amazing, amazing. Anybody have questions for Julie? Very, very timely that we talked about how we need to address issues in middle school to make early college successful. And here we have, a, we have an opportunity to actually get that going right now. That is fabulous. Thank Everything's you. coming together. It's really nice. That's, that's Jesse saying. Yes. Yes. saying all the time. <laughs> yeah. Everything's coming together. Doesn't look like it, but everything. No, together. no, no. I mean, there's a lot of faith and optimism here, which allows things to happen in a, in a good way. So, thank you, Julie. Looking forward to seeing you next meeting. And um, Sandy, um, Director of Student Services. Hi, everybody. Good evening. It's been a while since you got to hear a COVID update, but I thought I'd provide one. Um, it's still around in case anybody didn't know. And um, we've had some cases here over the past few weeks. And as some of you might be aware, we had to make the decision to close our pre-kindergarten program at Under Mountain this week due to the number of cases. And our hope is to clean everything out and have everybody get healthy and return next week. So that's been happening. We have sent out some information regarding uh, vaccination clinics that are going to be happening at New Marlboro next Tuesday, September 27th from three to five. It is for staff, families, and students. So I was just going to mention that it would be <laughs> terrific if you what took a look and signed up. It's three to five on September 27th. And also here at Mount Everett, there's going to be one um, from 2.30 to 6, 2.30 to 3.30 is um, staff members, um, and 3.30 to 6 is for families and students. What day October 18th, Tuesday, October 18th. And then how do you sign it? Um, I, the links are on the website. I, we sent out um, an, all, an email, but I can send it to you directly. I'll send it to you tomorrow. So please, yes, please. sign up. I, I want to say something about this because it's come up. It came up for me. It came up for Beth. It's come up for others. Some of us have had the whole Moderna gamut. Um, if you are looking for that, they are not for the booster, the the bivalent um, booster, which yeah. is for the new mm -hmm. um, variants. They do not have it. They only have the Pfizer. So, yeah. but it's listed. So if you pick it, 
it's right, going to yeah. say there are no appointments available, right, right. which alarms you because yes. you think, wow, shouldn't I be able to get an appointment here at the school that I work at? <laughs> um, yeah. So you can't do that, but the Pfizer is available along with the flu vaccine and along with um, the other, you know, the initial shots for the, for the young kids and everything. So please encourage people to sign up. I know that there are uh, many appointments available. I heard from Tritown today, Tritown Health today, that they're you know, waiting for people to sign up. I know there's some concerns, oh. you know, obviously for families with young children about it, but I am just going to say again, I, this is no judgment, but our pre-K was closed and, you know, there might be ways for us to support, you know, our, our families here. So that is happening. Um, we've sent out a, a very detailed letter today to families and to staff members that went over protocols that have changed to um, with uh, Desi again, and they're working closely with Dr. Sylvia, who's our school physician, and talking with Tritown Health on a regular basis. Just there are still some strategies that we can use to make sure that we minimize the transmission. And we are now no longer doing pool testing or any of that, you're probably aware, but we still do symptomatic testing with Binax now. So consent forms went out today. So if you're a parent, please look for those consent forms if you are okay with your child being tested in school for symptomatic testing. And also we do have um, a supply of at-home tests available that we're sending um, if there's concerns and we wanna do follow-up testing to make it easier on families. So that is um, a big update there. So if you could spread the word regarding the vaccination clinics. It would be I'm just knowing that like the testing, everything's shifting and whatnot. How are we on the expiration dates? Do we have a, how long of a window? Currently, we have on our, um, our at-home test vaccination dates, uh, our vaccine, sorry, mm -hmm. expiration, expiration dates are um, January 23. January. I am hearing, they extended them from July. They extended them six months to January. I don't know if they're going to be extended again, okay. but currently the supply we have expires in January. Okay. Um, ju and just, I just wanted to mention about the expanded pre-kindergarten program right now. I think we have 62 students uh, enrolled and I got another call today. It's just amazing um, the amount of outreach we've gotten about that. It's going really, really well. Uh, our teachers have been working together and collaborating on the curriculum and, and making sure that all of the classrooms, now six, have the materials and um, support that they need to run the curriculum, you know, kind of consistently across all different styles, but consistently across the board. Our occupational therapist and speech pathologist and um, literacy specialists are all going into the classrooms or scheduling it right now to be in the classrooms to provide um, additional instruction to help children be ready for kindergarten, starting just to prepare. Uh, they're doing a lot of social emotional learning. You saw a couple of the pre-kindergarten classrooms today in that video. So it's it's going very, very well. And we are in the um, getting together an aftercare program for, for pre-K families here, which we haven't been able to provide in the past because there's different licensure involved. Um, so anyway, we've got a couple of our folks here who have been employees for our district for a period of time and they stepped up to the plate and really wanted to help. So we put that information out to families. We're putting it out again. Um, we're hoping to start it on October 11th. And it, you know, at this point we feel like we can um, have 15 children in the program and are trying to do whatever we can to support families. And it will run exactly same time as the Southern Berkshire Child Care Program, Aftercare Program, 245 to five. And it's the same cost. Wonderful. Yes. So please put that word out there. I think it's a great thing to, to offer our families. So that's another wonderful thing. I'll leave it at that. More to come next time. Can I just ask you the status of the warm line? Oh, I'll do that next time. <laughs> um, I'll give you just a brief a meeting with the mental health team. We did get the grant. I think I mentioned that at the last meeting. Um, I'm meeting with the mental health team on Monday. Um, it, has it's there and, and available and it hasn't been accessed as much as we would like. We're going to look at it in a different way. So we're reimagining the warm line, we're keeping it in place, but we're going to reimagine how we use it, utilize it when we meet next week. And I'll come back to you with an update. Art? Um, is there any talk about Moderna coming out with a vaccine? 
vaccine rather the, than the booster. The booster. It exists. They just don't have it at these. I just got it this morning. Well, there's a national shortage of it, actually. Yes. And it, there's some. Where did you get it this morning? They wanted. Okay. So they I, just don't have it at this, these clinics. <laughs> and you can basically, you, Walgreens is doing, and Lee is doing just walk in. Yeah, I know. I was just excited about uh, doing it. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's great for us to be seen to be doing. It. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But if you need Moderna, you have options. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, we're going on to new business. No. Oh no, we're not. We're going to. I checked the because I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I checked it off. The Amherst Early College uh, report and. Um, that has something to tell. I do. So um, I had our early college internship coordinator give me some talking points. I'm going to do her talking point number two, which is Lindy Marcel is our new early college <laughs> internship coordinator. She says she loves it. <laughs> and it says right here. And she's looking forward. She is going to be at our next school committee meeting to actually do it live. But tonight was not able to attend. Um, so we have three different early college courses underway, which are going incredibly well. Students and professors seem pleased. We have writing in the humanities, which is two sections of 25 students. We um, That's the total, total, 20. total 25 and two sections. Um, it also meets the high school um, ELA graduation requirement while earning three college credits. Um, Murder Most Foul uh, is another course that's available, which we have um, around 10 students taught by Mount Everett faculty. And we have film appreciation, which has six students in it. So um, uh, it's been really, really successful. And I, I heard people just transferred in the other day. So that was exciting. Yeah, that's being taught by the person, my husband, recruited to take over his job. Oh. So we, we got the top person. Excellent. Volunteer to come over. These guys are good wranglers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, she said, uh, well, middle school open house um, took place um, this week as well. And Lindy spoke with parents on Wednesday evening. Jesse and, and Lindy gave an overview of the early college program for all the families. I heard very positive things. I was at um, Lady Marlboro open house and I heard very, very nice feedback about um, the middle school as well. Uh, the Berkshire County School Fair is next week. Um, hmm. And uh, oh dear, it says here, the event is the perfect opportunity for you to explore the various school choices available to your family. This event will showcase public and independent schools from pre-K to grade 12. Uh, Lindy will be attending with our new early college brochure that were put together. Um, and Wednesday, September 28th from 5.30 to 7 at Miss Hall School in Pittsburgh. Interesting. Yep, so uh, next week they have a UMass admissions visit uh, on September 27th. Lindy is going to meet with the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions. Um, Mount Everett will help students understand how to take advantage of early college programming when applying to UMass schools. Mm -hmm. And then she had the grant funding. So this is her, her update, but I think that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot going on. She only kept it to the last two weeks. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. All right. This is getting really cold to hear on the reacting. Zoom. The air conditioning's on in here. It's cold. So if you're out I there, know. it's on school. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the windows are open. Or maybe it's just the windows. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It might be the windows. It's just the windows. I thought I was getting my COVID reaction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the new business, it's delightful you, to see what we've been talking about putting on a piece of paper um, the year-long calendar for the That's school great. committee. Yes. And um, where Beth has listed all of the things that she knows need to be addressed in a timely manner. So um, the one thing in November, not said that that's a re reorganization meeting, but yes, it is. It says remember. school committee reorganization. Oh, it's yes, fourth so one down. Mm -hmm. Sorry, okay. So, well, would you like to me. address? Sure, um, we tried to take a look at um, 
our history of past agendas, the um, superintendent's checklist, which I think I shared with you was, you know, nine pages, single space, double sided of <laughs> tasks to do, um, looked at, um, you know, our, our strategy for continuous improvement. So the goal is to make sure that throughout the year we are highlighting um, and providing the committee and the public with presentations on the work we're doing so you can see the progress. Um, and then you'll know, you'll know specifically what we're looking at at what point in the school year. Um, there could be additions, but these are the things that probably must or we're used to covering um, at, at various points. Some of the things I snuck in there, some people might not be too happy, um, but I, I thought that they, um, you know, like we should talk about a food service and an athletics update. Um, ancillary services should have a time to be in front of um, the community just talking about the programming. So um, if you think of other things, great, but this will at least, um, and then when people are looking at our collective goals between the superintendent and the, um, uh, and the school committee, you, can, you should be able to see where there would at least be evidence or reports that are accessible to show. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Okay, huh? Is the safety team meeting the, uh, the discussing with the police chiefs and fire chiefs and all the right that we've been doing an right? executive session? Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So being so disorganized, I decided after having marked up the minutes and the things that I thought should be changed in the minutes, I decided I should also save this page <laughs> and lost everything. <laughs> so now you have a new one. <laughs> so anyway, I yeah. think for me, this is really helpful, especially coming in, I think as we get the, uh, as we get the, I uh, can't believe you guys are all leaving. <laughs> the new board. Um, yeah, it's gonna I be very really helpful. helpful. Structural wise, I did notice it, well, I'll go to the goals next because it's probably a better place to discuss that. Uh, yeah, thank you. So if anybody has no, any suggestions or something that we may have missed or something that you'd like to see, please just send that to myself and um, I'll work with one to update this chart. Great. Okay, so the next item is school committee goals for this academic year 2023. And I just wanted to, to remind you that last year we decided to do shared goals with Beth based on her goals. So there is a document shared goals between the superintendent and us. And we have the past years had a goal setting workshop and we discussed self-evaluation. We have there's a lot of work to do in that realm, but in changing our view of our goals are not really separate from the superintendent because our goal, goal is for her to be successful and that we would have picked one or two of the things that she was working on to make sure that we put our shoulder to the wheel on, which were the newsletter for one, community conversations was another. And um, so it seems to me since there's gonna be a reorganization, it would be premature for us to set the goals now. I'm just bringing it to your attention that this is something that's needed to keep the, the committee focused. And is this something that needs to be voted on to say this is an upcoming project that needs to be done? Um, or is this something that's just can be presented to the new committee? No, I think I just, we needed to say it now because normally we, like last year, we started with this okay. because there was no new people coming in. So it, we didn't have a, an election. It was an off year. So we forgot about what, <laughs> what we might've done the year before. I, Does that I, make sense? But I'm still going to work on my goals. My goals, um, which you could add in if the committee yeah. or could pick out of, but I'm going to try to, my goal is to present, um, we probably would need a meeting of the superintendent evaluation in between, but is to take, um, get at least on paper, what I think uh, might be the goals that we're going to focus on this year. So we want, I'm trying to stay to this earlier timeline that like we did our strategy mm -hmm. for continuous improvement in September, October should be the goals at least 
for the superintendent. That's great. So huh? then it makes a little more sense when you get to a mid-year, you're not really doing your initial mm -hmm. goals. So this, this, this committee will be helping you with that. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I say that now. <laughs> <laughs> About that apron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess we're going to need um you in touch with Jim yes. about setting a date for a meeting. Mm -hmm. and, oh, okay. And then our workshop planning, which is the time where we take on big topics that we that need more time than we can spend in this meeting. And um we might be very busy in October because I was gonna suggest that one of our decisions that we, we put out in our um, long-term plan for um, diversity, equity, and inclusion was how to deal with land acknowledgement and the, uh, indigenous people's day and those things. And <clears throat> so I'm just gonna put a suggestion out that we, in keeping with indigenous people's day slash Columbus day that's coming in October, it seemed like it would be very poignant to have that discussion in October and have a workshop meeting that's very inclusive, invites parents, teachers, students, and us to have a conversation about how the district would like to handle this. And maybe we can resolve this before we leave the board. And if you're in agreement with that, um, I'm gonna have Beth send us send me some dates that aren't going to conflict <laughs> with any of these billion <laughs> other things that are happening to see if in fact we can find a date that we can get together and um, that we have the intention of doing that. And if anybody wants to work together with me on strategy, whether this is the outreach subcommittee to strategize on how to get a good representation of people to show up, whether we want to get a survey out to people that we can have in front of us that night because people can't actually come. I know that outreach has to already get out a newsletter like last week. Um, so they're going to be pretty busy. So it might be another group of people. But I had thought a possible survey to our entire community with appropriate questions that we could work with in our workshop. Do we do we have like a survey tool? Like, mm -hmm. like a survey. We have monkey. So we, we have that capacity. Can I have reactions to that possibility of way of working? Um, if I'm working with you and you can nudge me, I will volunteer to help collaborate. Is there any, well, I like to, if people don't think a survey is necessary, I, we don't need to go ahead with it. I think it's a really good idea. I think a survey is really important. I think it's going to be controversial, controversial um, and solid answer in the board that there was controversy on the con discussion. I think to have a survey and do everything you can to allow people to speak their minds. Also, I think there has to be some, if we are going to do an open meeting, there has to be some kind of guideline um, uh, so that it doesn't go off the chart. Yeah, right, right. And I think a survey will help that. Because yeah. then we'll know what to then have yeah. a better idea of how to present. Mm -hmm. It also gives accessibility to people who can't attend. So yeah. it gives lens to a voice. Yeah. Um, okay. But I mean, it, like, I, I think the expectation is the, it's a learning and a listening. Absolutely. And a good dialogue, but like, I don't know, like, depending on what happens out of it, like, it might be a protracted. Well, I think it, of conversations that our goal is to listen, number one, yeah. and to educate ourselves as to what our community mm -hmm. wants and is ready for. And then we can work from there. We don't have to have a goal to make a decision at this workshop meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and how many, because um, I'm coming in after the, um, after the workshops that were done last year. So I know that. Um, I think that if we can incorporate or, or if the um, outcomes of those workshops can be incorporated in the initial mm -hmm. presentation mm -hmm. so that people really understand that there is that this isn't coming from people outside the district understand it's not coming from out of the blue. 
Yeah, we can give a. I think that would be historical. great. Yeah, and kind of yeah, and, and really um, what in the in some of the presentation, what students learned, maybe have students talk about what their experience yeah. was or interview students. Um, so that that kind of. Yeah, I was thinking that our curriculum coordinator might be able to help us get a sense of what's happening now in yeah, class. Just kind of give it context. That's so that we have a sense of how how this goes. Julie, is that reasonable? She's got her hand up. No, I don't, oh, Joe, I don't have my hand. <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> just, just the cursor. <laughs> uh, can, can, I'm sorry, I was having a hard time hearing Nancy. What is it that you were? Okay, so what? I'm we're thinking of having a workshop meeting regarding whether we have, how we recognize uh, indigenous people having lived here before, what kind of acknowledgement makes sense. For, and the question is, how, what is in the curriculum at this point? What, when and who hears what about this? Any information that you have that you could give us would be helpful. Oh, so if, are you asking me at like what grade level do we start talking about this? Uh, and what is the unit like basically and, um, yeah, so we know we okay. which teachers are involved, how many kids know what at what age. That's well, that sounds like a really big question, and I think I should get you specific details and send it to you. I could give you a like an over a broad overview now, but um, no, no, not now, Julie. Yeah. It's quarter of eight. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is for you. If you can possibly provide it for us for our workshop session, that would be absolutely 100%. I can do that. Great. Okay. Terrific. All right. So we have Julie. I have Jeff to help me a little bit with putting a survey together. Anybody else who wants to jump in on that? Right? Is that what you said you would do? Yeah, I'll, I'll help out. Okay. I'll help with it. Okay, so I have Jim and Jeff to help on that. And then we have Beth to help figure out when we can possibly pull this off yeah. if we can. Halloween. I'm just mentioning. Okay. Oh, 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 or at least it can be work that's getting queued up for the next committee. Yeah, that there's the work that they can, can take with if them we, to do we'll the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, we are not in the business of making people feel overburdened. This is not necessary. So let's we'll see what we can do. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I have no comment there. Thank you very much. I feel, and there will be further workshops that the new committee will, on different topics that the new committee will come up with. And we, use, we try to have maybe three a year or something about topics that we care about. Okay, so unfinished business, I don't think we have any. Sub subcommittee <laughs> reports. Um, Dennis was very sorry he can't be here, and we will be doing the um, the uh, <clears throat> policy subcommittee uh, second reads next meeting. So that's not something we need to attend to right now. Now let's see what other subcommittees. Let's go through the list. This. I don't, we don't have the subcommittee list. No, so, well, here's what happened. It, it, um, it's, it's several pages in. It's across from the enrollment report. Oh, it's page two of your agenda. You didn't get away with it. I, oh, I, that's I, great. Well, that's true. This is a very it. interesting copy. That, I, I am so grateful that we have anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I printed out. So yeah. mine's in a little Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I can call it. Cold, eh? <laughs> what? The real I asked the committee does it have any? We didn't. Okay, they did not meet. How about community relations since the public school address? We just met. We're um, hoping to hoping to get a meeting next week for like a good working meeting for Paul newsletter it's to be done. Okay. That would be great if you included me in that. Yeah. I yeah. I, I, can you include the entire committee in the invitation? Yeah. Because I think you might need some helpers. 
Okay, so I addressed uh, that we um, policy of the subcommittee is postponing this, these items with yeah. second reading. Um, Bonnie, do you have personnel nope. negotiations? We did not need to meet our dates. Okay, what about um, your situation um, with the new buildings and grounds? We have not met, but we should meet. We will. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the superintendent. With another meeting. Yeah, the superintendent evaluation subcommittee will be pulling together. We will be meeting soon. Okay. Oh my God. We have not done executive minutes. All right. Review. So then, uh, I'll yeah. send a note tomorrow to. to well, the reason that. you can't do it until I transcribe about twenty sets of executive minutes. And one of the shortcomings, which I hope you come over. Well, we can at least get on the backlog. Yeah. Okay. Well, I For just want to really appeal to at the reorganization do not make the chairman the minute taker it, it yeah. is just of the committee it's just yeah. i don't know why if i take responsibility for saying yes repeatedly yeah. but it's not a good idea so. mm -hmm. definitely not. i can make a suggestion someone told me that you have to make a no sign so you can just hold it up if you're not good at saying no <laughs> i'm also terrible at it and i lost my sign so i'm just saying <laughs> okay but yes, you're right. We can get onto the backlog and then I can throw in the- Jeff, you also have in that backlog all the ones from negotiations. But I gave you like, I don't know, 10 or so. Yeah. Okay, that. so- I'll reach out to Linda tomorrow. Gonna, gonna, next week. Next week. Next week. Okay. I'll send an email tomorrow. Yes, and but you'll get it next week just so you aren't offended. All right, so there was no need for curriculum subcommittee to meet. Uh, and the community, I don't think that either Bonnie nor I was in on any early childhood or child care. All right, so the future agenda item is the district student attendance. And, and it's going to be on the agenda for you. Right, for in October. So we have two more uh, scheduled meetings for this particular school committee, which are on October 12th and the 27th. So I'd like to announce that the 27th will be some sort of a party. And I promise that I won't be too busy to make it happen. And I need some input on whether I'm expected to produce plates. <laughs> I was kind of looking forward to a plate. I will not make you make me a plate. <laughs> you don't have to have a plate that day, but I was very I will make day you day, make but... Janelle a plate. <laughs> <laughs> we could share one. No. No, no, no. <laughs> you have to put something on the plate no now. When you <laughs> so no, they're not so special. Stuff on other people's plates. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to know if there's an expectation. Or there's no expectation. No, 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 no. What I think I need to do is make about, about a dozen like a little, of them so like little, they're on hand. That's a good idea. Plates yeah. are easier. Yeah. They're so they beautiful. Are. I'll make these. Well, if I we can 3D print, print them. I can have them 3D <laughs> printed. I love these. Did anybody? Did anybody let Mr. Thompson say what they were? Yeah, yeah that's what I wanted to on camera. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're just a gift to the school committee from the 3D printing class. So Mike Fass, uh, senior, um, designed it and printed them up for you. So you can each take one home. Thank you so, so much. What are they? <laughs> they're just uh, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. So they, they did, the PLA, PLA plastic <laughs> is considered food safe, but don't put it in your dishwasher. Okay? It's, it's, it's a good it's, it, uh, Not completely, but it will soften in the dishwasher. So hand wash. Um, well, I'm gonna, I think it's just fine. Or just use it to organize your desk. That's well, this is what I was told. Clips. It's not a shot glass. <laughs> well, I was going to field test it no. with my five year old grandson because he may say this is the best cup in the world. There you go. Oh. Mass produced. Okay. That's right. Nice. Oh. That's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Double shot. Depends on the time. Yeah. 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 Other There's agenda items they would yeah. add, like to add this. Maybe you can test your cup out. It seems like it's going to take two hours. I move to adjourn, so. I, you feel free to read it. I My husband is the chair of a um, town meeting he's at now with the kids sitting in the hall oh. who have not had dinner. So I think I have to go rescue them. <laughs> okay. okay. I but think, go read it. But I have to. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Wait, what are we reading? I'm sorry. 
It's going to be, I won't oh, mention the person's name, but one of our graduates, it's a hand design card I just received now. Um, dear Ms. Silvis, thank you for continuously representing the SBRSD community in the Eight Towns District Talks. I know it can't be easy, but I really appreciate your advocating for us. I hope you continue to bring up the truth, and I look forward to seeing what the five towns can do to keep our schools with gratitude. That's so that the student taking that's great. That's a great way to end the meeting. Yeah, a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's vote. Um, we've got Bart. Yes. Nancy. Yeah. I'm gonna go all over the place. Bart. <laughs> yes. Nancy. Yes. <laughs> Hey, Jim. Yes. Jim. Yes. Uh, yes. Jane. Yes. 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 Yes.